Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up. So chatting through everything that I failed to read in the month of May. So May for me was not a very good reading month. I just was slumping pretty much the whole month. Like I didn't really have that much desire to read and I sort of just tried to embrace that as much as possible. It was my worst month of the year for reading, but I did watch a lot of TV and I did a lot of jigsaw puzzles and I did a lot of not reading activities. Uh, I also uh, travelled, so I was away for a week visiting my parents, so not too, not like too much travelling, but I hadn't seen them since Christmas, so I was staying with them for a week. Uh, so I did manage to read a total of six books in the month of May, which comes to 2,682 pages. So, I mean, still, <laughs> still uh, okay, but a lot less than like the 4,000 or so pages that I was reading in the rest of the months of the year. Of these, four of them were fantasy books and two were sci-fi. One of them, I'm like, is it sci-fi? Is it historical fiction? You'll see when I get to it, but that's where I classed it for now. Uh, one was new adult and five were adult. Uh, I read one five star, one 4.5 star, two four stars and two 3.5 stars. So overall, I like enjoyed what I read. Uh, I liked it all. So there's nothing <laughs> negative to say about the quality of the books I was reading except that I didn't always have the desire to pick them up because of the slump. I think I went very, very wrong with the series that I started. So my aim for the year is to bring my number of incomplete series down and I have just read loads of new series this month. So that did not go to plan at all. I started three new series. I didn't continue any. I didn't finish any off, which brings my total up to 29 whereas it was previously at 26 at least that, that, yeah that's where I believe where I'm at that did not go to plan uh, and I will definitely have to try and fix that in in June and bring it back down again because it needs to stay below 30 I mean it has to stay below 30 like I've worked I've been working so hard this year to get that number down and now I've just gone and ruined it all in one month so those are the stats and as well at the end of the video I will show some of the puzzles that I did just because there's not going to be so many books, but I could add a puzzle wrap up in here if you like puzzles and so you can see what I did with them. So the first book that I read in the month of May was The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. I've heard both Patrick and Jesse from the Bookish Mum talk about this book and so it sounded right on my street. And they were completely right. I really, really enjoyed this book and this start to this series. So it's a multiple perspective story and it, it's a really interesting writing style because two of the perspectives are told in first person perspective and the other two, persp two, three perspectives are told in third person. So I found it a really interesting stylistic choice to tell some of them in first person and some of them in third person. And I saw an interview, I believe it was on Patrick's channel, where she talked about her decision to do this and how she was like, I like writing both perspectives, let's see if I can put it into one book. And I think it really worked because of how it differentiated the characters' uh, voices and the way that you could really tell who was who because you knew the characters that were in first person and you knew what they sounded like and you knew the characters that were in third person. So I quite liked it. The, when I got to the, when I was reading it and I read the first couple of chapters and they were in first person and then suddenly I got to the third person, I was like, <gasps> I was like, what's going on here? But then I got into it and I've heard from some people that they didn't even notice that there was multiple perspectives, multiple like first person, third person, whatever. So that was a really interesting choice. Um, but the perspective in here is that you, you are following Lynn, who is the daughter of the Emperor. And in this world, there are these things called constructs, uh, which are made out of bone shards. So every person has a bone shard taken from like behind their ear at the neck. Um, and that's taken like a sacrifice ritual from every child. And then those bone shards are used to create these constructs, which are like, I guess, not animal companions, but like they're these creatures that can go around and like some of them do mundane tasks, like, I don't know, collect money when people come in to arrive at port. And some of them do really complex tasks, like the emperor has ones that manage his finances and like manage the trade. So it, and the more and more complex they are, the more and more bone shards they are. And the bone shards, like when they're in use, they suck the life out of the humans that they came from. So it's a really interesting system and sort of a bit sci-fi-esque in a way that it's quite interesting how it was juxtaposed in like this fantasy world and the setting is is really interesting like it's in a it's a word i can never say archipelagio 
archipelago that 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 word so lots of groups of islands and so you do follow another character Jobis um, and he travels quite a lot between the islands you get to see a lot of it and he has this the cutest animal companion called Mephi who for me was like a highlight of the book because he was just such an interesting interesting character and he was like a mad not a magical creature a fantastical creature so you didn't quite know what he was and what like what the magic system was going with him and then there's other perspectives as well throughout but those two Lynn and Jonas I'd say are the main ones which are and they're the ones that I had the most connection to as a whole but I really, really like this I really like the representation that's throughout it because this is like an Asian inspired setting uh, there is also LGBTQI plus rap in this and I am definitely definitely keen to read the second book in this series which is coming out in I believe in November so not too far away I then read my like most anticipated book of the year <laughs> not just the month of the year and that was The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn and I managed to find this like a couple of days early in um Forbidden Planet and it was signed and I was like I, I literally squealed when I saw it I was like this is coming home with me straight away uh, and I cancelled my Amazon order I was like it's mine mine <laughs> so this is John Gwynn's latest publication it is a completely new series for him it's called The Bloodsworn so completely separate from The Banished Lands which I've talked about a lot <laughs> and I do have a whole video where I'm talking about a guide to John Gwynn and like where to start with his books and generally just a gush because I love them all so this one is the start of a new series you've, you've got three main perspectives Orca, Elva and Varg and so you're following each of them uh, which is the difference between this and his other books which have many 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 perspectives in the faith and the form. so this is just three uh, and it's a Norse inspired world so influenced by the Icelandic sagas and Vikings uh, which is really interesting because I've not that read that many uh, Viking inspired fantasies so I really enjoyed like having that inspiration in a fantasy setting so it was a really it was a really like dark world and a harsh world I would say like it's I would not want to visit this place I would not want to be there but the world is like formed by the bodies of these dead gods so like you have these mountain ranges which is formed from like the body of a dead god snake uh, which is just so cool and you see that in the map like it, it looks really really cool and so they and they use these bones for different like magical things so that was really really cool uh, and the characters as a whole like I really enjoyed all of them like I know I've seen some people's reviews and they're like oh yeah, yeah orca 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 and I'm like but I liked them all like I liked Orca but I liked them all so um so yeah I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this as a as and when this is published I will be doing a live show over on the on Alan from Library of Alexandria's channel on the 6th of June uh, I'll put the time up uh, discussing this book and our thoughts and feelings so if you want to hear more about my feelings towards this book then I will have that linked and we will be discussing everything that we loved about this because this was the shell space book for May. Oh words! Then we get into my audiobooks and my puzzling bonanza and I reread The City of Brass. There was absolutely no reason for this. There was like there was nothing there's no cause for this. I was just wanting an audiobook and I am doing a um, discussion of this series over on Vish from Books with V's channel and we're doing one book a month. And although I've like read the whole series, like I didn't really need to reread it, but I reread it. I, I just had the audiobook on. I just could not stop listening to it. I love this series. I love it, love it, love it so, so much. Please read it please read this series uh, and I believe everyone that we're doing the discussion with I think they've all enjoyed it like I got a message from Fish this morning to say she was really enjoying it I was like phew what a relief <laughs> um, because it, I would have hurt if she hadn't liked it but uh, I yes I I don't know listened to this in like a couple of days I just could not stop listening to it as I jigsaw puzzled and it I mean, I enjoyed the audiobook, but I, this, that was the third time I read this, like I, third, fourth, maybe, th I think it was the third, like I've definitely read this physically, I, I think I've read it twice physically, and that was the third time listening to it on the audiobook, and I love these characters, so this is in, uh, an Egyptian-inspired world, like Egyptian, Middle Eastern inspired, and you're following, you have three perspectives, Nari, Ali and Dara. Uh, you start off following Nari, Nari in the streets of Cairo and she is a con artist and so she 
tells people that they're ill to get money off them to buy her potions. Uh, so she does that, but she also, it is legitimate in some ways because she can see if someone is ill and she can heal them. Uh, and then at the beginning of the book, she summons a Jin warrior, Dara, uh, and finds out that things aren't quite what, she's, what they seem and she is not necessarily fully human. And they travel to the magical city of Devabad, where there is lots of political intrigue and families at war with each other and historical magical influences throughout. Uh, so it's very, you definitely see like the warring factions within the Jinn Devas and you sort of see all these different magical creatures and how they're going to interweave and it's it's all very intense so you're like oh what's going on what's going on um and you don't really know what's going on because you your a lot of the perspective is as nari and so you're seeing it through her eyes and seeing her come to terms with what's going on in this situation you do follow ali and he is a prince uh from Davidbad, and so you do have his perspective as he, and he does explain a lot more about the politics and what's going on um and the situation there so you do have him there to like help you along with the world building um i mean he's much more than that he's much more than just a world building character but i, I mean i love him uh so yes i mean i just love all the characters in this i love the characters there is lots of description about food which just makes me hungry and i really want to try all the food in here um but yes i would strongly recommend reading this and as well like the romance and uh, it's just got everything you might want in a book I then read and listened to The Oracle Year by Charles Soule. Uh, so this was a recommendation that I got from Jessie May. It was on the World Hoppers sci-fi high recommendations. And in this you'll follow this main character who wakes up one day and he has a hundred and whatever premonitions for the future. Uh, and so he starts like he's he starts selling them or he, he makes a website where he publishes these premonitions and then the world starts to realise that his premonitions are all coming true. And some of these are quite like big ones, like saying, oh, there will be how many casualties from this plane crash. There will be this many babies born in this hospital on this day. Uh, but some of them are completely random, like this person will put salt on his steak. This person will go out and buy a milkshake. Like some of these premonitions are very, very precise and bizarre. And so you, it's really interesting to see how they think and like why he's received them. Uh, so, and then you also have everyone that wants to like find him and like get more premonitions from him. And so he starts selling the premonitions. So you have like big corporations buying these premonitions off him and you have governments seeking to find him as well. And, and him like, I was a normal guy and now what am I doing? So it was really interesting that at like that or like what would happen if you did actually, if you were actually able to predict the future and was able to sell it. And so he becomes known as this like the Oracle. It was really interesting. It was really interesting. I don't really know what else to say about it without like getting into spoilers. Uh, but it did sort of just follow like an everyday guy living his everyday life, but He's also having premonitions and like how this affects his life and like where his life goes from here and like what this means with like the governments coming to get in. Like I really liked that aspect and then feeling like it was like a web that was closing in on them. Um, and you do have like multiple perspectives in here. Like you have a journalist, you have a preacher, you have obviously the Oracle, but you, you do follow like different perspectives as they all try and like link up and come together and trying to figure out like how he's got these premonitions, where are they coming from? What do they all mean? So very interesting. I would I would definitely recommend if you want a quick sci-fi uh, session or world like modern day book. Then I moved on to Stormglass and this is the first book in the spin-off from the Chronicles of Ixia. So I have been reading these with my friend Fish from Books with V and our friend Sam. Uh, the first one being Poison Study. So we read that whole original trilogy over the first three months of the year and now we have just started this spin-off trilogy following one of the side characters from that trilogy. Uh, so the first one being Stormglass and then we're going to continue one a month. I think for all of us we enjoyed this but we didn't enjoy it as much as uh, Poison Study or that series and uh, I'm trying to think of like how to explain it because obviously I don't want to get too much into this because spoilers for that other series but you're following our main character Opal 
and she is a little tricky because she has a lot of self-esteem issues and the thing is you can understand why like i can see why she has these issues and i can see like where her thought pattern comes from but it's also it gets annoying you're like you just want to shake some sense into her and as well it sort of felt like so the beginning of the book within the first chapter you don't really have any build up you don't really have any like introduction to the characters because opal's not really a main character in the other series she's just the she's just there as like a little side character she, just doesn't, she hasn't really had much purpose and it feels as though you just launch straight into the action uh without really much build up or explanation or yeah or exploration of the world or what's going on here it's just it's jumped five years and then you're just in so that was a little bit bizarre i mean i definitely got into it and i guess you get into it quite quickly because of how action heavy the beginning is and i will say like the writing is the same as the original three that is very addictive writing so you're just like gotta keep reading gotta keep reading gotta keep going uh and uh each chapter pretty much ends on a cliffhanger so you feel as though you you definitely want to keep going at the end of each chapter you're like uh, and so you have to keep going and so it does have that compulsive writing style that you want to keep going in but overall I felt like the plot was a little messy and it didn't have the same flavour as the other ones like it didn't quite have the same panaz. I also wasn't a massive fan of the different love interests I was like Ugh. didn't they didn't like get me uh so or I didn't get them uh so yeah it just wasn't a favourite so I think I gave this like a 3.5 stars like it I still enjoyed it, I had a fun reading it, but it just felt a little bit messy, especially at the end as well, like the ending just happened. I was like, so that's it, anticlimactic much. Uh, but I mean, obviously I'm looking forward to seeing where the rest of the series goes and seeing what happens, but it wasn't my favourite. And then the final book that I read in the month of May was Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. So I went, um, whilst at my parents, we went to Oxford for a day out with my mum and my sister. And obviously, if you're in Oxford, you have to go to the bookshops. You have to. It's what you have to do. So we went to Blackwell's, which I've talked about before, because they have uh, free international shipping. So if you like, it's, it's, a, it's a really great, it's an independent bookshop in Oxford. And I would strongly recommend supporting their business. <laughs> um, and as I did when I was there physically. Uh, so uh, they have like a really great uh, fantasy and sci-fi section, like so much fantasy and sci-fi and they had so many Octavia E. Butler books so so many there was like a whole shelf I was like wow they've gone all out on her books so I picked up Kindred and I just I picked it up I read the first I don't know I read the prologue maybe when I was in the bookstore and I was like you can come home with me and then I'm just going to read you straight away and just ignore whatever I was planning on reading uh, and so yeah I just picked it up and read it straight away this does read quickly but it is also a hard book to read uh, it wasn't there were some parts where it was not easy to read uh, because of the content so in this you're following a main character Dana and at the beginning of the book you find out it I mean the book the first line is I lost an arm on my last trip home my left arm uh, so you know it's not going to be the most pleasant and you're following her uh, as she goes back to the 1800s in America and uh, is there saving one of her relatives or ancestors it, except she, he is a white ancestor and she is black in the 1970s and so going back into the 1800s as a black woman is very very dangerous because of the prolific slave trade at the time and so it was a very harsh world for her to be in especially as a pretty well not educated but educated but like educated for the time in the 1800s she is seen as very highly educated uh so it was hard to see her struggle and see her adapting to being a slave and like being in that world and her going she doesn't really have like the ability to go back and forth as she wills she is sucked back into the past whenever her ancestor is in danger uh, and the only way she can go back to the present is if she is in life-threatening danger it was it was definitely hard and eye-opening to read about and scary like very very scary to think that i mean this is a fiction but that 
people were that horrific and I mean I know that they were that horrific like I've like you know that they are but you sort of do oh I don't know maybe it's my white privilege that I can I don't think about it on a daily basis and block it not block it from my mind but like it's not something that I think about all the time and this definitely like brings it to the forefront of your brain and you're like you it makes you think about it and makes you like confront the history and like think about what happened and think about what this means for our society and how the impact of those times are still in the world today so i would strongly recommend reading this i would i think that a lot of us will get a lot of value from reading this and it's definitely going to stick with me and i'm definitely going to be thinking about it for a long time to come and it is it's very short it's like just under 300 pages so it, it's not a long book but it's long in the sense that you think about it as you read it that you can't read it too quickly I would say that it definitely has like this sticking power with you and that you I, I mean I didn't want to read it quickly because I wanted to think about it and like process what was going on and the trauma that our character Dana was facing so as well that this came out in the 70s and it's still so so relevant today and it's definitely I would recommend reading this so those are the six books that I read in the month of May. Uh, hopefully I will have a much, I hope I'll be able to read more in June, especially with the Shell Space Readathon at uh, the Olympic Games that I've got to be competitive and I've got to read, although I have quite a busy month ahead of me, so we will see how that goes. But that's it for the books. If you're interested in the puzzles that I did, then I will show them now. So I did this 2000 piece uh, Disney puzzle so it has different scenes from different fairy tales from their films that we had I really really enjoyed this I would say it was it was fun I had a lot of fun doing it I will say that the border and the edge was really really tricky to do like I struggled to get the um the the edge in and actually it was a lot easier once I was doing the actual image on the picture uh, as opposed to uh, doing this border because this border was a challenge because there was no like there's nothing discerning it. and I had pieces in the wrong places a few times and they looked everything looked right but it didn't go together but I definitely enjoyed doing the like actual pictures and like finding different there's different pictures like hidden within so you can see like Bambi down here or I don't know different bits Lion King like you didn't see you see like Cinderella here obvious but then you start to see more as you do it uh, so I enjoyed this. Uh, I then did um, this gradient puzzle. I've never done one of these before, uh, but I had so much fun with this, like so much fun with it. Uh, and it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. It, it went together really, really easy. Like I did this in a day because I just could not stop doing it. So uh, I normally when I've done a puzzle, like I leave the puzzle pieces in the box and just like thumb my fingers through it and sort through it. Whereas this one I like put it all out on the table, sorted the whole thing and put like all the purples here, reds here, greens, blues, etc. And then I just put them all together as I went. And you, it was so therapeutic. It was so therapeutic to do. This was a thousand pieces by Cloudberries, it's the company. And I will link all the puzzles uh, in the description box if you're interested in doing them. But I would, this was really, really fun. Uh, I thought it was gonna be hard, but it really wasn't because it, like you can see as the puzzle pieces change color. And then once you've finished with all the purples, you've got no purples over here. You know that you've done all of the pieces. So I would definitely recommend. I then did Rural Retreat, uh, another thousand piece from Ravensburger. This one, I had it in like the cupboard for ages, like I redid it. Those other two were new. Um, this one was a, a redo. Uh, but yeah, it was just a nice uh, village scene. And then I redid, I got this one earlier this year. So I'd done it once. And so this was the second time I did it. And that was this, um, I think it's like Bavarian. Bavaria is what it says. It's, it's Bavaria. It's so a castle. Uh, and really interestingly, I've never had a puzzle in this like a uh, pyramid shaped box. So it was really bizarre. Uh, and I don't know, like, I sort of aesthetically I'm like this is really cool it's a pyramid but then when you when I have puzzle pieces I like going through them in the box and I can't do that here like you have to tip all the pieces out because otherwise you can't do it like you can't leave them in the box it was yeah it's a really nice puzzle to do with lots of lots of nice different sections that you can work your way through yes again yet again I really really enjoyed this one 
so I will try and link this as well. So that was my obsession of the month, my jigsaw puzzles. Um, and I mean, a lot, a few of these I did with audiobooks, a few of these I did whilst watching TV. Um, so I probably could have utilised my puzzling time a bit more by doing more audiobooks, but I had fun watching TV. Uh, so yes, those are the books that I read, those are the puzzles that I did. Uh, if you like puzzle content, then let me know because I, I've been obsessed with doing puzzles lately. I don't, I don't really know how to like film them. Like I think they're a bit tricky to film, but let me know what your favourite book of May was. And thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in my future videos. Bye!